What's up everybody? Slade, grade level collectibles here. Um, I have some more notes on what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, but first, I want to drink some water. My, uh, my throat's been kind of, uh, kind of itchy recently. I think it's uh, something, something going around, some drainage, whatever. So if I sound a little hoarse, it's because of that. Um, but today, I wanted, I wanted to go over the modern boom of what we've experienced it, experienced this past, past month for record-breaking sales. Uh, you know, we got the Moonbrion that's been graded to high heavens, uh, but still hitting $1,800 figures. Um, we have, it seems like the more modern the better. Uh, obviously, surging sparks have gone surging. I mean, it's, it's crazy. And then don't even get me started with evolutions, prismatic evolutions. Holy cow. Um, it's a very exciting time <clears throat> in the hobby, uh, but also it's a very sobering, sobering time in the hobby um, in the sense of if you've been here more than, you know, 20 minutes, you know what's going on. You know the factors and the um, the market sways and what's going on in the background. Because if you've been here more than 10 minutes, you know this is not normal. A set that's still on Walmart shelves is being resold online for double, triple MSRP. That is not normal. Sets that just came out, they are single prices in a PC-10 selling for $50,000 in a PC-10. $50,000, that's a whole meme thing uh, with the Pikachu EX alternate art. Um, SIR, but today I just wanted to have a talk, uh, a talk about this boom period. Uh, what should you should be weary about, what you should be cautious about, but also what you can take advantage of uh, going into what all of us know what's going on and the different avenues of way that you can really make money in this in this hobby and in this period of time. But first, I wanted to just make a little callback of how cyclical and how fast the market is and how fast things change. Um, I remember when, you know, just with the drama stuff, with the, not so much the drama of personalities and drama of people, but the dramatization of certain events that happen in the hobby, such as when CGC, uh, changed their scale, not the first time, not the second time, but the third official first time, the third time they changed their scale, unofficial third time. Um, <clears throat> everyone was calling, calling like, oh, it was the death of CGC. It was the, it was the talk of the town. Everyone was talking about, I'm never grading with CGC again. They keep changing their flip-flop and their, their scales a lot around. Nobody knows what's a, a 10 and 9. And bet between my butt and a PSA 7, I have no idea what condition that is. Um, and there was a whole bunch of conversation where I'm not grading with CGC you know, anymore, whatever. And a lot of people on their minds. And this happened maybe a year and a half ago. I can't even, uh, you know, the hobby moves so fast. It could have been you know, six months ago, I, I don't know, I don't know how fast the, the market moves, but, um, you know, what have we seen now, up to now, uh, up to this point, CGC has been, has been ke keeping up with it, even though there's a whole nother subject I can get into with certain bad or good actors that you've, it just depends on your viewpoint on this person, uh, but how much they've pumped CGC, how much they've put money and uh, resources into CGC where the current uh, uh, volume that's going through CGC, is this actually like true of this volume or is it majority of this person's inventory going to CGC? But that's a whole nother subject. But CGC, just looking at the numbers, uh, they have done pretty well uh, with uh, the volume that's going through CGC. Um, outside of BGS's uh, lottery system with the black label, uh, it seems like the second most popular uh, grading company to go to is CGC. And specifically because these price points that the modern cards are hitting. Uh, specifically like a, I was looking up uh, recently, um, a Kingdra EX and a Greninja EX. In a PC-10, a Kingdra EX goes for about $60. 
um, and a, uh, a PSA 9, um, that was, sorry, not a CGC, uh, a PSA 10 goes for $60. PSA 9 goes for about, uh, what was it, like $30, it was $30 or $40. Um, in a CGC 10, not the pristine CGC 10, it goes for a little bit under that, maybe $50, but a, a CGC pristine 10 goes for about $200, $150, dollars That's the same, uh, and um, the same thing goes for the pristine 10 um, Greninja EX. It goes for some crazy values. And so it's very interesting to see the you know, if you're not hitting a pristine 10 or close to it, um, you know, it's it's somewhat of that lottery as well. Some people say it's, it's relatively easy to hit a pristine 10, especially modern uh, with uh, CGC, but for just the average, a CGC 10, like I said, goes for a little bit under a PSA 10, but a CGC 9, oh my gosh, you're really raking into the gutter on a CGC 9. A CGC 9 Kingdra EX, I think last time I checked, like some listings was like $12, $15. I mean, nothing, absolutely nothing. You're maybe getting your grading cost out of it. Um, and it, like I said, a PSA 9 goes for like $30, $40. So for me, the I, I see the draw to go for CGC because of the amount of money that you can get back if you hit that pristine 10 on a modern card, chase card, whatever. Uh, but for me, I'm all about risk uh, avert, uh, risk adverse. And so I'm looking at averages and the average price, even though that CGC 10 pristine is way up there. I would rather go with PSA because I have that middle ground, I have that middle average, and I'm, I'm all about, you know, all about making the, the top dollar for my card. But if I, you know, if I get, especially for a card underneath fifty dollars raw price, um, if I hit those CGC nine, some of them are not even worth it. You have to crack it out and submit to PSA, but then you're just trying to break even, even if in the time wasted with that. But saying all this, CGC has done really well, even with the, all the controversies it's had in the past, because of how, how fast the market accepts the new terms. Whenever you're hearing the new drama on the street, um, you know, from Rattle or from, or whomever, this stuff could just blow over in a week, and it didn't mean anything. Um, <clears throat> there are certain market movements that really mean things. But for one huge controversy that came out maybe a couple months ago that I haven't heard many people talk about, and that is the, or nowadays anyway, that's the CT scan. Uh, CT scan. That was huge. People were saying vintage is dead. You know, um, this is not, uh, vintage is not investable anymore, especially single booster packs. Someone can scan it and get the best hit out of it, and then it's worthless. Uh, there was a real, there was some you know hanging the signs saying the world's coming to the end the world's coming to an end, coming to an end and look at it now no one's talking about it mainly because of huge modern releases that have come up in recent times that it's kind of just all blown over and no one's really focusing on it just like in a, a video I've done in the past about the horse blinders there are horse blinders that happen in the hobby and. It, if you aren't aware and you, you look at it at a <clears throat> skeptical eye saying, okay, does this really matter? Okay, does this really hold its water? Um, and it shouldn't be all like, oh, everything's on fire. Everything's on fire. It's all worthless. Uh, you really have to take all everything with a grain of salt on how, okay, how, how, if, um, how much is this? worth freaking out over. So I wanted to bring all that up uh, because it's just so easy to lose sight or lose um, the idea of something actually happened in the hobby and it's, it's something to be weary of instead of just another video title for another PokeTuber to uh, you know make 20 bucks over. Just something to think about. But today's video, again, is that the modern boom the modern boom in Pokemon that has uh, start that started about um, I would say I'd say in a month and a half ago, where people started talking about these prices going up higher, higher, and higher. Um, I know people who are right in the pulse of the market, such as uh, Z and G Emporium, such as James. Um, 
how he, day to day, week to week, he knows exactly what things are selling for, what the trends are. He's very knowledgeable in this. And if anything starts to move left or right, he's the first person to like ring the bell of like, hey, things are happening, things are happening. And um, that was the same time as uh, Top 10 Pokemon. He came back to reporting the weekly news because it's, um, it's you know, everyone wants to know. Everyone wants to know, hey, did my, you know, uh, did my, uh, you know, chess pin Art Academy card, did it go up 50% in value overnight? You know, I, I want to know that because I want to know uh, what my portfolio is doing, all that stuff. You know, it keeps, it, it, it gets everyone talking. It gets everyone excited because it is an exciting time. You know, things are selling out, surging sparks. You can't find the Pokemon Center on the uh, Pokemon Center ETB anymore because it's completely sold out. I tried to buy some and I... I was like, I'm not doing this rat race, and I'm like, no, I'll I'll let you guys just uh, just just wrestle around in the dirt trying to get these ETBs, and that's just my own own opinion in the sense of the rat race, because it's like everyone just trying to click buy now, buy now, buy now, and there's just it's just a waste of time at the end of the day for for me uh, essentially, because I'm not. I work a nine to five. I go. To, I go to work. I have other things to worry about than to you know flip my ETB for for double its price. You know, I'll let all those um, other people that don't have a nine to five that do this full time. I, I'll let them do it. But for me, I'd rather go into Walmart or whatever and see if they have any on the shelf. I buy a couple. I'll sit back, let it let it uh, let it simmer, uh, and, and see what it does over time, uh, depending on my. Um, uh, my fundamentals of what I buy and what I don't buy, uh, but I'll just leave that up to them. Um, but I don't like being a part of that rat race. But regardless, when things, like I said, when things are going up in price, everyone's talking, everyone's excited, everyone's like, oh my gosh, you know, so many people are coming back in the hobby, whatever. But with all that excitement, you can really, um, you can really have a blind eye to the things that we've learned that you guys should should have learned in the past of what's been going on, what the trends are, what what you've seen. You know, and, and there's always in every boom, there's a oh this time's different. Oh this time's different. Bucko, no, it ain't. It ain't different. <laughs> it's the same jazz. It's the same. It's the same revolution. Same revolving door. If I have it written down, things get popular. Things get popular. More that equals more demand. Things are po getting popular. People are seeing things. They're very excited about the set. There's more demand with this specific set. There's things get bought out, get sold out, and there's less supply of it. More people get hyped. More and more it's popular, and it just creates this revolution or a revol a revolving door of just prices going up and up and up and up. That's, at the end of the day, that is what's going on. That's the kind of the definition of FOMO, really. Um, this just, uh, not echo, we'll, we'll talk about echo chambers here in a second, but just pressure cooker. It's a pressure cooker of um, all this demand and demand and demand because everyone's just focused on it. Everyone's just so focused on surging sparks, so focused on uh, prismatic evolutions and nothing else matters. And in those moments, there are tons and tons of opportunities, not inside, not inside on what's everyone's focus, but what's on the outside. I had a great uh, uh, success with a card that I've been wanting to get for a long time. And since everyone's just been pouring money and tons and tons of money into Prismatic Evolutions and into um, Surging Sparks, that um, uh, that auction went pretty low, went pretty low for what that card was. And I was able to scoop it up at, at a flipping steal. I was about to buy a PSA 9 of this card that um, maybe if I spent it at, at a price that if I just spent, you know, 4,000, 5,000 more above that PSA 9, then that's the amount of money that I spent for this PSA 10. And usually, you know, nines versus tens in this card is like double. It's double or even higher than double. And so I got a great, great deal on this card 
mainly because everyone's focused on one thing. And like I said before, to me, it just feels like a flipping rat race. And I ain't no rat. <laughs> I, and don't take this the wrong way. Please don't take this the wrong way. But, you know, if everyone's just going after that cheese, that little simple cheese on, on, on that, and this is a weird... Um, a weird, you know, image I'm, 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 I'm cooking up, but if everyone's just piling over that, just a little piece of cheese, whatever, they aren't looking at the whole stockpile of cheese right behind them. They're only looking at this one specific cheese and one specific color, and they're not looking at all the other opportunities that uh, could arrive. Because in this hobby, everyone only has a certain, and, and why that is, is because everyone only has a certain amount of money or energy to go after one thing. We're not all, all octopuses where we all can do 20 different things at 20 different times. We all have our limits. We all have our, not only our um, uh, visual limits in the sense of how many things we can focus on, or focus limits, whatever, um, but also just financial. You know, no one has all the money in the world. Even Zhang from China can't buy, you know, all the illustrators in the world. He only has a certain amount of money. Where that money comes from, I don't know. I don't want to know. But he only has so much funds. And all of us only have, especially the, the sperm of the sperm whale, only had so many funds that we can throw around. And that's where knowledge comes in. That's where the experience in the hobby and how, why that is so, so powerful in this hobby is because you know and you know how to focus your funds so that you have the ability to have the success rates of the things that you buy or the money that you put into certain items to be more successful in the future than the trends and failures in the past that you've seen and not uh, make as much money or uh, perform as well as the things that you have seen that has been successful, very successful in the, in, in the past. And again, that's why I'm kind of tying all this back to the modern boom. Like I said, Moonbrion recently sold PSA 10 for $1,800. That card is amazing. If the artworks, I'm not doubting that the artwork's trash, that it won't do well in the future, whatever, but I'm trying to make sense of a modern card, a very, very modern card, an uh, Evolutions, uh, Evolutions, what am I talking about? A uh, Evolving Skies uh, 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 chase card that everyone and their mother's trying to chase has so many in, uh, in the population, has so many graded PSA 10. If everyone cashed out, yeah, of their Moonbrions, PSA 10s, the price would just go down to like 20 bucks because there's so many of them. And again, we only have so much money. There ain't a no buy list that can support that much volume that they would still be buying. There's always a limit. It's when the mentality changes that the price really changes because all this hinders. All this, and again, I just gave you one uh, one example of the Moonbrion selling $1,800, but everything. I mean, uh, Lost Origin, uh, Giratina, uh, I think it went up to $800. Um, you got the uh, Rayquaza VMAX alternate art at $1,100, $1,200. I mean, all these modern, modern cards, all the money's being pumped into all these cards where they're being pumped into these cards, but they're also leaving and potentially leaving other cards that you could have, um, yeah, long-term better performance, but that you could acquire at, you can acquire at much cheaper values, um, such as vintage cards that are hard to find. I've actually seen an uptick, a very much uptick in vintage cards right now because there are people, collectors like myself, that know these trends, that knows what's going on. They're selling they're selling their modern, all their modern alternate arts that they know in the future they can get back. And they're putting that money into the chase cars that they've been wanting forever. The vintage has been out of reach, but now they can get it at, at, at great value. But 
Now that, that everyone's doing that, or a lot of people are that are smart doing that, uh, the prices have risen on those. Obviously, the Crystal Charizard PC10 has, has gone up to almost $16,000, uh, where it used to be uh, $14,000, $13,000. Uh, the um, Gold Star Rayquaza PC9, you can't even find those on eBay. Um, and there's a reason for it because it's so utterly rare. That's why things change in value so quickly because of the rarity of certain items. But again, all this modern boom, it is all supported by popularity and by demand. Once those two, or specifically demand, once demand dwindles, that's when you see everything coming down to earth. That's when you see time and time again about any modern release that comes out Everyone's excited about it. Maybe there's a reprint, maybe not. But over time, something else takes its place and nothing. And it, and it, and it falls, and it free falls. I look at uh, Vivid Voltage. Vivid Voltage, when it first came out, it was like $200 uh, a box, even higher, 250 whatever, when it first released. And, and everyone was like, oh, there's so much, there's, uh, you know, there's a giant Pikachu VMAX rainbow. Uh, it's always going to be in demand, always going to whatever. But as set goes on and on and on, you know, d uh, uh, demand dwindles off and it's not as popular anymore. I mean, right now, also, it's still available on the Pokemon Center, uh, which is wild because it's, it just goes to show how much they actually produced of that set. And going back to popularity in a boom period, <clears throat> the things that sell in a boom period is what's popular, is what's in demand. It's not the fundamentals. The fundamentals exist in a linear fashion, fashion and over the entirety. The fundamentals don't change. They do not change. As in, there could be Huge spike in popularity, dying off. Huge spike in popularity, dying off. This is like intrinsic value on the things that have truly fundamentals. The scarcity, the rarity, and the uniqueness of certain cards. Those things do not change throughout the entirety. I mean, we can go 30, 50 years of Pokemon. They do not change. Popularity changes. Back in 2000, and I think it was yeah, 2016, 2015, even older. Biggest Pokemon on the block, like the, oh. My screen's just full of froze. Hi, right, there we go. Screen's froze for a second. But, <clears throat> like I was saying, in 2016, 2015, the biggest Pokemon on the block and the most popular was actually Shaman. How many YouTube videos recently have you even heard the word, sh the Pokemon Shaman? I mean, there hasn't been a, sh uh, a Shaman card in, in a long time. And that was because it was very, very popular and very competitive in the TCG. And because of just uh, popularity with, with, with uh, uh, people collecting the card game. So a lot of Shaman cards back then were, were very high in priced. But now, who's talking about Shaman? Who's talking about the, the Shaman EX card from, uh, I think it was EX, it was a GX? Anyway, Shaman EX card from Pokecune. I mean, that card is very still, is still popular, but to the people that know about it. So saying all that, <clears throat> please, during this time, be smart. <laughs> it's really easy to say that, but it's, it's, it's hard to know what's a smart move and what's a maybe not so smart move in the long run because you know, perception is always 2020. Perception is always better in the future than in the current state of, 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 uh, of it happening. But as people have been in the hobby for more than you know 20 minutes, and even if you haven't, maybe this is your, I don't know how this is, but maybe it's your first video. Uh, of of uh, of talking about investments or talking about uh, buying cards that you know uh, you're buying hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of cards. Please do your research. Do your research in in these cards, in these um, in the things that you are putting all this money into. 
um, the, the worst thing I want for any type of person in this hobby is to buy a card that is super hyped up and then in a couple months it's worth half its value. That does not feel good. Not to me, not to anybody. I don't wish that on anybody. Um, as we know, there's cyclical patterns that maybe it goes down 20% in value, maybe it goes up 20% in value, maybe it maintains for a couple years, but just seek out experience. Seek out experience in the people who have done this and, 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 and went through this in the past. And so right now, the people who know what's going on, they are selling. They are selling into this market boom and they're making smart decisions, like myself like myself, that I only have a certain amount of capital, I'm not buying all these alternate arts, all these crazy high price cards, I'm selling. I'm selling to the market, I'm buying an MSRP, and I am not FOMOing. And that's what I'll leave you guys today with, where it's, it's easy to talk the talk, but it's hard to walk the walk. <laughs> and once you understand and know the fundamentals, want understand and know the cyclical patterns, it's a lot easier to just sit back, relax, and don't give in to the FOMO. Because it is hard, I know. It is, it is very hard to not go out trying to find it, searching Sparks, ETB, going out so trying to buy, you know, spam Pokemon Center, try to buy it so you can flip it, or to, to, to open the new sets, trying to find the Pikachu um, <clears throat> SIR and retire early. It's, it's hard, it's hard to do that. Uh, but don't let that, you know, just because everyone and their mother's uh, creating videos on this certain subject, don't let that deter you from your collection goals, from your collection, what you know is uh, valuable and what you know is underpriced or overpriced. Have all that in perspective and have all that in the front of your mind and don't let it bog down you the bog down with you because when it comes to modern when it comes to bull bull markets it's kind of what drew carey uh said on the on the wonderful television show whose line is it anyway where the game is made up and the points don't matter with me saying that meaning that with modern it does not care about your feelings the market does not care about your feelings moonbrion can go up to five thousand dollars today and nobody can understand why, but that's just two people that really wanted a card and didn't care that they were over, overpaying for it. And maybe you're new to the hobby, or maybe they were told, hey, this card's going to $10,000. It does not matter. What, when it matters, when the fun, and when I say that it's the points, I mean fundamentals. When the fundamentals matter is when we are not in a bull market, when we're not in a boom period where you have long periods of time where you know everyone's kind of settled, there's no crazy excitement, there's no crazy under, uh, everyone's kind of in the know, Pokemon's printing to demand. That's when fundamentals really matter. And where, where it all begins is where you choose and you pick the things you want to put money into and the things that you want to spend your time in during bull markets, uh, booms, and during busts. You should have all that in your mind. And it, I know this video is long enough, and if you want me to explain more on the fundamentals, the good old saying, older, rare, mint or better, um, you know, by the good old S.M. Pratt, uh, but also, uh, to me, uniqueness and exclusivity um, I could talk about that in the future, uh, but for right now, you know, the biggest question, which is the title of this video, why is modern outperforming the fundamentals? It's easy. It's demand. Demand, demand, demand. The market does not care about your feelings. If Timmy and Jimmy want to spend $10,000 on a card and it's sold and they pay it and you see it on eBay and you get mad about it, don't. Don't waste your breath. Don't waste your, your mind space. You know what's going on. You know it's unprecedented. And if you have one of those cards, sell. <laughs> and buy something that you uh, know the fundamentals, you, you know it's rare, you know it's scarce, and buy it up. And use this influx of cash for that. But uh, 
that'll have to do it for today. I know it's not a super, super fun, fun video uh, or, or anything, but I've had a lot of, a lot of thoughts, a lot of thoughts about this. And this happens in every single kind of bull, bull market boom. Uh, and we'll, we're going to see some frustration and, uh, and some other mixed feelings when all this modern craze kind of dies out. Maybe it'll be a year, maybe it'll be next month. Who knows? People uh, associate this with 2020. 2020, uh, that bull market lasted like a year and a half. Um, but I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the Pokemon Pockets uh, game. That game's been really fun. I've been loving collecting different, uh, different cards in that. Uh, but hey, keep... Uh, Keep doing with uh, what you guys are all doing, and at the end of the day, you know, just enjoy Pokemon, enjoy the space, make relationships, um, and just just enjoy the artwork, man. Just enjoy the artwork. I'll catch you guys in another one. See you guys.